let's revisit the day when University of Delaware professor Brian Kunkel chatted about cicadas. He explained anything and everything you'd ever want to know about these little bugs, including how lawnmowers... Well, well, Jimmy, you might want to pick this. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Um, I, I don't know if made cicadas amorous would be the proper way to put it, but at least the sound of lawnmowers made them swarm. We'll put it that way. Okay, okay. I like how you put it. We okay. say all that leading up to this. Katie and Jimmy's reactions to said cicada saga, priceless, right? So let's keep the conversation going. <laughs> Filling that role today is Ebony Jenkins, a doctoral student in the University of Maryland Eastern Shores Food and Agricultural Sciences Program. Ebony, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Why are you so fascinated by cicadas? <laughs> Well, I'm fascinated with by cicadas because I'm studying agricultural entomophagy, and that's the study of edible insects. So when I found out that the cicadas were edible, I said, well, I might as well dig a little bit deeper into having an understanding of these insects. Are there other insects that make good movie snacks? Um, yes, actually, um, the natives are known for consuming and eating the um, cicadas in the nymph stage. So they can be sauteed, they can be, you know, eaten in various ways. They can be ground into powder. So you can make bread, pizza, and different things of that nature. You are a scientist. You have forgotten way more than I will ever know. <laughs> I'm how, sorry. What, what are you, how do you prepare a cicada to eat? I mean, how, what, what do you do here? Um, well, first, you know, I wouldn't just recommend going out there and just eating any kind of cicada because of pesticide exposure. Oh. But if you're pretty sure that there is no pesticide exposure, then you could, you know, rinse them, fry them, saute them with vegetables or however you would like to. There are plenty of cookbooks out there on different ways to consume them. Really? Do you know how they taste? Do they taste okay? Um, the cicadas I have not personally tasted, but they say that they taste like similar to like nutty flavors or asparagus. Oh, that's interesting. Now, is it true that this could somehow help people with food insecurities in other countries? Yes. Um, currently, there are over 2 million people that eat insects as a, a protein content. So for a lot of people, this is not a new thing to be doing. It's just, you know, for people here that consider this maybe taboo or something that they've never heard of. Do, do you see this as something that might become more of a regular thing here? Um, yes. Um, the, the, I'm sorry, the dollar amount for the insect-based market was previously at $105 million, And by the end of this year, it is projected to be $1.53 billion. That is so fascinating. I tell you one thing, my dog likes to eat cicadas, so there must be something to it. All right, can, can you, I'm gonna be real quick, I know we're out of time, but can you throw us a real quick tip for preparing a cicada? I mean, virgin olive oil, what, what do we? <laughs> well, personally, I haven't tried it yet, but your best bet is to look up um, a cookbook. It's the internet, there are plenty of ways to, even YouTube, if you were to look up YouTube, you can use whatever you would use to cook regular food. So butter, olive oil, seasonings, garlic powder, whatever your taste buds, you know, whatever you want to put in your dish, you can put in your dish as if it was just a regular source of protein like chicken or beef. So in other words, cheese, cheese. would go well with cicadas. Ebony, that is absolutely <laughs> amazing to me. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Interesting. <laughs> wow, Ebony, uh, Ebony Jenkins, uh, UMS doctoral student, incredible. Thank you, Ebony, and good luck with everything you're getting ready to do. Thank you. I appreciate that.